And I think what's what's worth noting that the definition I, I really um, I really love the way the conciliar fathers wrote it in, in in the seventh council. It's longer than this, but they say we declare with full uh, precision and care. I think is what the what the you see different translations, um, but I think that's the general one. Um, and then they go on to declare what they're declaring. And so they're saying we we have thought carefully about this, and here's our decision with full precision and care. And a lot of people end up, most of the conversation, usually, not always, and, and, and more recently, I've had some people actually argue about the definition, which makes my heart warm and glad, because usually the, the arguments, people are arguing about anything but the definition, because right. I think actually the <laughs> definition is, is, is less, has less fireworks, certainly, than the anathemas. And so what do they say? We, um, we declare with full precision and care that, that holy images ought to be portrayed in churches. That's, that, now. Uh, if you look at different translations, you get different grammatical structures. But the only unambiguous declaration in the in the definition is that they ought to be portrayed in churches. And then, depending on what translation you get to, um, either and then what follows is, well, why do we portray them? Because then people are drawn in love to them. And the them in that case is the images. But as they go on to say. The image that the love is for the, the person portrayed. And so you right. are drawn to love the saint as a as a, a image of what Christ uh, of Christ in a particular time and place. And you're drawn to an image of Our Lady and you're drawn to an image of Christ because those those draw your affections upward um, to the saints and to to God who, who glorifies the saint. Um, and so it's good that you are drawn in affection to them and it's good that you'd be drawn to venerate them. I think. Well, what we can certainly say is the Seventh Council thinks veneration is very good, but the Seventh right. Council doesn't actually even demand um, veneration. Now, you do have in the, the um, Laba and Kosar, uh, probably botching their pronunciation of their names, in the 17th century uh, translation, they say to these, the images should be given due salutation and honorable reverence. Um, but the more modern uh, Norman Tanner's 20th century translation, which is generally considered definitive, um, I'm not a scholar, so I'll let, but that's, that's generally what, what, what you'll read. Um, he says, um, the, the, he just says that it's good that they're portrayed because the more are those who see them drawn to remember and long for those who serve as models, the more they're drawn to pay these images the tribute of salutation and respectful veneration. Now, that seems like a very minor distinction, but it's a distinction between saying it's good to portray images because, uh, because we're drawn in love to them and it would be good for you, for people to venerate them versus you have to venerate them. And it doesn't even, even the, the Laba and Cossert uh, uh, mm. one doesn't actually even demand veneration. It just says that veneration is good. Now, everybody, everybody I've ever talked to thinks that I'm just equivocating like crazy here. But I actually think there's a really important difference. Like to have an icon on your wall is a good thing because it draws you to an icon of Christ. It, it, draw, it draws your affections to Christ. And it would be good if you venerated that icon. Is very different than saying you must venerate that icon. So for, you know, like I would say, you know, you should own a Bible because it's a really good thing to read a Bible. But I wouldn't say that if you don't read your Bible, you are necessarily like in flagrant rebellion against God. Um, and so I think what, what, what the definition absolutely declares is that churches ought to have images of Christ mm. and of the saints. And I think they should. Um, yeah. I think it's a mistake not to. Again, I, you know, that local church that's, that's, that's whiting out Jesus in the pictures is teaching bad Christology, whether they mean to or not. And I'm sure... 100% of them affirm the Nicene Creed and they mean it. And I'm not saying they're, they're being dishonest or anything, but you can't do that and not um, misconstrue people's sort of incarnational and sacramental imagination. So I think it right. is good to have images. And I think churches that lack images inevitably, uh, even if not, even if not every person gets their incarnational theology wrong, their, 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 their spaces are teaching uh, are, are teaching an, an, an insufficient incarnational theology. And it's, it's worth noting that the cross, um, even though in, this, in the first century, the, interestingly, the iconoclasts were okay with the cross. That was their one right. exception. They were, they, and so, so the de definition says, like the Holy Cross, we all agree on the cross, but that, they, they sort of say, the others, you know, we should too. 
but a cross is clearly an image as well um, that that proclaims uh, something symbolically and that draws us to the sacrifice of Christ. Um, right. 